So thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to present uh, the result of our uh, mostly one year work. So we, it was a survey on operation experience from NPPs which had performed uh, or which made the way from base load to flexible operation. And uh, so this was done uh, based on the experience in Germany. And um, I will go further. So this project was supported by Energy Force Cleaner Group. And um, we uh, performed various interviews uh, with German operators. And the main task was to find the key insights uh, on, on the short term and on the long term to find out um, what is the real impact uh, of the plant which is connected to the grid, which um, has a total new mix of uh, energy generation, to find out um, which kind of uh, suitable measures uh, can be performed and why. Uh, so to which uh, flexible operation, which kind of measures uh, are needed. And so, and the main task, of course, is to ensure the safety and reliability of the plant's performance in this so-called new environment with much more um, needed flexibility from the grid side. So <clears throat> I would like to introduce our team. So we had three utilities which helped us very much. It was RVE, Person Electric, and Waterfall Germany. We had uh, participants both from B and PWRs, and the names of the plants you see here. Uh, the people which uh, were able to participate in these interviews were very different. Most the high level management, because we were interested not really in technical details in this study, but more on the strategies, understanding how it worked really, what, what was done in advance, what are the thoughts behind, and so on. So we had plant managers, uh, even vice president, chiefs of operation, but they were always supported by their technical departments, uh, which also partly participated in the interviews as well. Also, we had an opportunity that the Genius Steering Group uh, delegated um, uh, their participants, and uh, these were some of the people which are already presented today. So we had a safety authority with us, TSOR and NDPs, uh, and uh, they prepared a questionnaire, and this questionnaire was answered by all uh, utilities, and then we had also a possibility to discuss the answers in detail. The Framatom team um, um, was um, uh, partly, so I, um, I was the leading this team, so I'm working on flex operation the last 10 years, and I was supported by various experts from Framatom, from PNBWR, from INC, for system engineering and fuel, and some of them are today also with us, and I hope can um, support me in the questions part. But before we come to these answers, I think that is uh, quite important uh, to speak about which kind of flexibility was on the end of this journey. So the question is, uh, to understand the measures and what they were doing, we have first of all to understand what is the level of flexibility the plants which we interviewed um, got in the result of this uh, transfer. And uh, uh, first slide is showing uh, BWRs which were interviewed. And um, classically, we found out that the PWRs in Germany are try were trying to perform flexible operation, not using the control rods. So they were going from 100 to 60%, and they were using mostly recirculation control. And the classically, if we speak about the typical type of flexible operation, it was something like going to level of 70-80% uh, and staying there about uh, three days. So this is something classical, and it was activated classically also via telephone. But looking further, we found out a very interesting case in one plant uh, in the north, um, near to Hamburg. They, they had in 90s already situation that the, the city had a strong need on flexibility, and the plant had in that time already to perform uh, automated remote secondary control to help uh, to stabilize the grid. So, and this was done uh, in the range of 100 megawatt electric, uh, both uh, up and down. 
uh, and with a ramp rate of about 20 megawatt per uh, electric per minute. Now we go on. This is this is this is what we see. What's going on in the months on the left hand side, and what's going on, on the day we say see on the right hand side, and it's something what can be seen here. Uh, BWR is, for example, the green curve. So they go from 100% from to about uh, typically also 70, 60%. And they're staying about six hours uh, during this um, down um, part. Um, the PWRs uh, in Germany, also a lot of them perform a very different type of flexibility. On this curve, you can see classical one going really uh, down to the low level from 100% to about 40%, 30%. It's the uh, Emsland NPP uh, during the day. So such things we also see. And um, other ones, it will be the... Uh, um, um, and, and, and so for, from, from that point, so this is... Uh, we can go further on to the most flexible plant in German grid. And this is this one, this is the ESA plant. And we had also opportunity to discuss with them a lot. So that means that uh, the PWR uh, feedbacks, uh, which we found out or uh, were given by the plant, which performed really, really a lot of flexible operation of different type. Which type of flex operation they performed, you can see on this slide. And we have a uh, real remote control flexible operation uh, where the plant operator even don't know which kind of auxiliary services it's providing in this time, but it knows in which range it is, which ramp is allowed. And it is one month picture, which you see here. So we have our overlapping, we have frequency control, we have um, um, frequency restoration reserve, and also load hauling, which could be both the uh, asked uh, service from the grid, like redispatch, or something which is market-based uh, dispatch. And um, also this picture is interesting to see because one of the main issues, which you will find in the slides further on, is the Xenon. And this is how we deal with the Xenon during these transients. We have the Xenon in upper part and the low part. And we say that it's uh, compensated very well by born generalized water. And there are no oscillations. And this is done by the <coughs> optimization, which we uh, implemented by the plant. Uh, uh, it's called the advanced load falling controller and a few words about that further on. So the first question of the group was, uh, was it a regional strategy to go flexible or it was kind of gradual adaptation because uh, the word necessity. And I think that this graph shows perfectly how it was. So we had a plant, German plants, P and BWR, both were designed as flexible plants but there were no, was mostly no need over many years. And then with introduction of negative price on the market, with introduction of the strong number of renewables in the grid, we found a situation that the increase of uh, the grid requests uh, became really visible. And on the other hand side, um, it's, um, this, this curve shows um, uh, the overall grid services of different types which the EPP provided over 12 years. So, and it's clear that the increase is very uh, significant and it started for about with, uh, I think, 2010. In this time, various optimization were carried out. And if uh, to say something before uh, um, the other slides, we will find the same things on most of each slide. We speak always about turbine co control optimization. We speak about monitoring and maintenance concept. And what is not here saying, uh, we're speaking also about uh, fuel conditioning guidelines. So, um, the second question was, uh, key, uh, what uh, if you're doing the transition, what were the key experience? What would you like to share? Um, what are the lessons learned for our preparation phase if we face this topic of transition? How you can advise to that? I tried to summarize various answers of different people. And what we found often is, it's, uh, they said, okay, it's always learning by doing. So of course, a uh, key thing is 
your design is clear, but further on, uh, with the, when you start, we have a pilot, you have the operational experience, and it's, for, it's of course, the main basic to, for, for the optimization. Uh, but there are things which have to be looked in advance. And first of all, it's the maintenance strategy. If it's really, it's suitable to the type of flexible operation which you are going to do. The second one is how to start. Um, the proposal was always to start with a part load to look how your plant is working at different levels. If there are some issues, how, uh, what has to be improved, what is the situation, and then add one by one, add ramp with one ramp rate to increase, and then the frequency. So it has to be step-by-step -step approach. Vibration phenomena of the whole plant is a very important issue, and I think that energy forest knows very well, so there is a special group, vibration group, where we all are also happy to participate and to speak about the experience. Monitoring and static usage factor for the most impacted components is quite important. The proper strategy for conditioning of the fuel, and um, from the PWR side, an uh, important point uh, to be stated was again and again that the digital INC helped a lot. It was introduced and it was very helpful to introduce for, uh, further on uh, improvements uh, with respect to flexible operation, like advanced load falling control, which is the improvement of the power distribution control. And also the overall topic of reactivity management uh, was very important. There was special development carried out to visualize, to predict uh, the xenon, and to help the operator to provide flexible operation ramp in the proper way to uh, reduce the impact, overall impact on the plant. Um, special things were mentioned as well, like control on power electronics should be looked at if it's robust enough for the increased switching frequency. Um, and it was also mentioned by one BWR that um, for the qualification of providing of some services, it was important to look if the control param on the control parameter settings uh, for this qualification. They had to, to try different things to be able to, to uh, really be qualified for the service of frequency restoration reserve. Okay, the next topic was, um, what is your view on safe operation of MPP, long, uh, long and short term and during enough to transition? And the question of separating in two phases, the first one was uh, what to speak about, we speak about direct operation including co-management as well. So what are the topics to be looked at? Cycle adjustment, uh, adjustment of the reactivity inventory on the core. Um, then we have the fuel elements. So of course we have different, uh, the, the, we have the loss of production energy, so it has to be taken into account in advance. Um, the fuel elements, um, uh, this, it was stated that the fuel elements of different suppliers shown their capability, so there uh, was uh, no negative issues observed. Um, uh, and of course, the importance again of the fuel conditioning, which will help us to prevent negative effects of transients uh, in, uh, on, on the fuel pellets, are called PCI guidelines, which is uh, um, very important for, for, for any ramp. Uh, the control rods um, have some kind of limitation and regarding the hoop strain, you spelling of absorber, and when we use them a lot, there were a lot of insides, then we have an increase, um, um, so we have higher flux during power transient, so they're exposed to higher flux, and so it has to be looked in advance if the control rods are not reaching their limits and if they have to be changed or so on, so this is one point. And on the other hand side is the control rod drive mechanism. So we need really fine motion control for such kind of uh, uh, advanced load falling control. And so they have to be robust and for the such kind of high level of number of movements. And it should be looked in advance what is the um, contingent, what is possible with the control rod drives uh, which are installed in the plant. And of course, the uh, tenant imbalance uh, with the result for BWR that they decided to try to minimize the movements of control rods to reduce the load of the fuel rods. For the maintenance of the plant, an uh, important issue was the erosion corrosion. So uh, it 
uh, should be looked in the plant, very important. Various plants notice that. Um, also, they found out which are the main components which are impacted. And on these components, the inspection and maintenance intervals were reduced. So this was the way, so they looked more often. And so this was the way how they uh, were able to, uh, to, to, to have uh, operation in a good way. Um, the control drives uh, in a, uh, have to be also monitored, the so-called call measurements of the control rods, uh, which uh, performed uh, so often as needed. And very interesting point coming out from BWR. So they said uh, they think it's really positive for the plant to have flexible operation because it, ha it, it, it gives you a chance to learn your plant in different situations, to learn so well to know every, every participant, and it's very positive. And also there are some components, it's for them advantage to be kept in move than to stay and never be used. So it uh, was quite interesting for us to discuss that as well. Um, so what do you consider the key capability of effective flexible operation? We come always to the same topics. They are always repeated because perhaps I think they are the main ones. So we have reactivity control, embolus oxenon after power ranges, changes. We have a borne as management and recovery system, which helps to be have to work with uh, flexibility without problems. Uh, for example, German glands, we have full automated boric acid recovery system. Um, uh, frequent power control um, in BWS uh, is uh, carried out with speed control circulation pumps, and I think similar pumps are existing in the Swedish BWR design as well. So, and as I already mentioned, uh, they tried uh, to avoid the using of the control rods. Um, adaptation of the uh, design and monitoring and maintenance concept. Uh, I asked here for some real examples that we can say something. Uh, the examples were given like robustness of design of the pumping, there's a topic of uh, thermal certification, some nozzles uh, and heat exchangers uh, were very important to look at. Uh, different plants, different uh, topics, but a lot of them are similar anyway. The walls were big topics as well. Um, also, the important feature is uh, a balance of water chemistry has to, to be looked at very carefully. And one plant mentioned that they have introduced a special, it's also PWR, spray control valves, which were very helpful. So it was possible to uh, avoid unnecessary terror loads and it was very comfortable to have such a component. From an operational point of view, we have uh, following uh, following statements. Plant shift has to be well trained in simulator um, uh, for special requirements, special faults, additional one perhaps, and even it has to be done if you have full automatic mode. So the, and they do a lot there. And uh, second point is um, perhaps is uh, especially important for this working group. Or I thought it could be like that. So the, the plan said it's very important to know that it should be possible if any doubt of any kind arises for the plant operator that they could say that they would want their plant to be excluded from provision of green services. So this is the main issue for safe and reliable operation for NPP that the plant never have a pressure on this point. So Next topic, what are our overall experience on inter-organizational issues? Um, the proper communication, as in all other topics of our life. Uh, so the, uh, this communication between law dispatch and PP has to be clear, clearly defined, and also often tested that there could be no uh, misunderstanding. Uh, they try to summarize which kind of communication exists or how it works. So in principle, it's, I think, uh, quite simple. So we have a, a shift operator which activating primary controllers, and it is uh, requested for this uh, range or which, which is asked for. So and after that, um, uh, this power control adapts it full automatically, so it's well for the for the primary control. Then for the secondary control, we have the automatic and manual one, 
and by automatic the shift operator still um, activates the possibility of this for the plant to participate in and the range and the ramp rate are clear uh, beforehand and typically as I understood they are predefined for the whole cycle if then none of the big things happen and uh, then the low dispatcher sets uh, can set the plant power level how he needs and it's called it's uh, everything is remote controlled in the, but in a load range and in the predefined ramp rate with the predefined ramp rate and, and then we have a classical one with telephone and email with some kind of uh, schedule also um, and this information is given and then the operator is doing everything manually uh, here we can we have a lot of statements from operators where they said that this automatic way of communication is very significant. It's very comfortable. It's really uh, you only can know how it is if you try that. So and they invited if somebody wants to see, please you're welcome. Um, and but it's very important that this activation of primary and secondary control is still always in the hand of the operator and. They said that it's an uh, important factor and wanted me to tell it here. Um, on the other hand, sign the up to date information about capabilities and limitations of the plant. So, there are generic capabilities which are given in previously for the cycle, but then if something changed, there's kind of information that you're giving day before and so on. So, this should be also actual, the right, and should be a right communication with your load dispatcher that he can plan your plant in the proper way. And then we had an interesting issue uh, without solution. Um, the plants, uh, the plants told that sometimes or often <laughs> they have a situation that the transients required in both direction in the same time or with a very short period. And uh, it, it could be a really deep thing, a deep reductions in a very short time, time frame, uh, strong power increase, and then uh, and, and in another uh, in another way. And it's uh, the result is that there is a real misunderstanding by the plant team. They don't understand that event can lead to some things, such things. They have a feeling that it's something somebody is playing on the market and something is going. Going to I think this issue should be. And they said they could not find any uh, improvement with the grid operator or negotiate anything. So this is the point which should be looked at or discussed. Um, then there was special question which kind of studies uh, and analysis uh, have been done uh, before or during this transition. It was a long way, uh, different for different plants, but a lot of similar to were able also to find and to there on this on this slide. Uh, they started with a generic study when we looked on uh, type of flexibility one to perform, looked at the overall impact. Um, the whole plant, uh, start, uh, including the core as well, looking at the changes uh, which we found in the development of the fuel uh, during the time, for example, increased enrichment, higher burn up, uh, mox fuel introduction, power rate, and so on. Um, and also looked at the current flexibility and the required optimization for this flexibility if it should be improved, if, it, if it's still inside of the design and what could be, what, what should be improved. Uh, further on, uh, the pilot was started, the operation experience was collected, and the data uh, collected and uh, measured data and analyzed. Uh, things which we looked at, just a few examples, is uh, the corrosion products over the cycle, how, to, how they moved on, primary, secondary, what happened with the chemistry, or to the temperature transients which we see, and so on. And then some real detailed evaluations were carried out. Uh, for example, for uh, enhanced low power operation, we looked with the Compton tool on erosion corrosion. Uh, and, uh, for example, for a level of 70, 50, 30, whatever, and looked where we could see the impact. Uh, and uh, afterwards, we proposed uh, kind of the maintenance, improve, maintenance program improvement. Um, the real optimizations, we come to the same topics again and again because they were the only ones. It's um, adaptation for horizon controls, uh, just to line C as overall point, but then optimization of power distribution control, of activity management prediction, 
And this was done, this has been interesting, it was done fully with the support and advice of NPP staff. So the staff showed that they need that, that they want to visualize um, um, uh, reactivity balance and they want to see that, they want to know what's going with the, with the rods, with the baron, what is the, the, um, the gradients, what is um, the volume and so on. So, this was uh, working together from the need of the operator till the product that they got. And afterwards implemented to the others. And I call it learning from the others. And okay, of course, uh, we were happy to be there for our, uh, for our customers. Best, um, also, um, of course, the topic of procedure. So it's very important to also to develop a procedure which can, t which says what are the conditions, what are the limitations for flexible operation, uh, which power range, which ramp rates, what is the area of power flow ramp, it's for BWR, but for PWR the same. Also to test this in simulator in the special program beforehand and so on. Um, Black, um, fatigue is an additional topic, the analysis were carried out, but afterwards um, the concept of monitoring maintenance were improved in mostly all the plants. Four minutes. Thank you. So what kind of plant specific tests? The tests um, were carried out during the commissioning phase, of course. They were real fast rounds with 10% per minute and also part uh, load operation we looked at. And afterwards, of course, for the new digital vector control and for the LFC we had, uh, and the predictor we had started always at the simulator and uh, then uh, trained also the plant, uh, the team there, and then looked how it works in the plant as well. Interesting is, uh, I found out in one documentation that for the NPPs which are providing and civil resources, uh, they um, performed um, before they have carried out the pre-qualification test, they made so-called uh, on-site hardware in the loop tests, and they tested the plant equipment. And this was the turbine controller, for example, and sometimes they all had an, um, with real turbine inlet valves in the loop or simulated. So, and it was the test um, to be able afterwards to pass the exam in a very well prepared order to adapt. Okay, coming to overall feedback, building capability is key factor. Um, uh, the, um, the needs from the grid side increased rapidly from 2010. Plan by plan evaluation, lessons learned from each other allowed to develop some kind of envelope where the impact were reduced as possible. Main optimization was in an INC, monitoring guidelines, monitoring maintenance. And communication is very important. Remote control is favorable. Training of similarity is important. Uh, and exclusion of plant in all the time is have to be ensured. And we ask the operators many times, if you will not phase out how you will deal different way, do you need another thing? Then they say, no, we always work like we work further, only the lifetime which we evaluate, of course, is different. But as they didn't use it at all before, they had no problem. But they had always an idea how to go further and the flex operation was not a problem. It was challenge in one sense away, but on the other hand, also possibility to, to learn the plan to get additional insights to, to improve also with uh, uh, the normal operation with some tools which were implemented for flexibility. And the last slide, uh, thank you very much to all people who participated in these interviews, Mr. Fuchs, Mr. Hacker, Müller and Hades. And for the future, we had uh, three ideas. We would like to do similar uh, interview perhaps with TSOs because they were not presented in this um, task at all. Perhaps there's an opportunity to do similar things with IDEA for LTE to have uh, the feedback from the French experience. And we would also like to make a kind of possibility study to speak about outcomes on one example, POBWR in the Nordic grid. Thank you very much, and I hope we can speak in the question time in another session. <laughs>